And my challenge today to Simon Case, the Cabinet Secretary of this country, what are you going to do about it? Simon Case, I'm talking to you directly. What are you going to do? Would- Your responsibility is to the government of the day and the public, not to your political masters. What can he do? Resign. No. Do it. Will he know who you Walk are? Away. Will he Will he recognise your voice when someone plays this to him later? I, I, I doubt it. Okay. I mean, I know him. Sure. I, I, have, I have worked in a department when he was working there. Uh, okay. So I, have, I, I know him. Uh, I have worked alongside him, not closely, but yes. I, I doubt you'll know who I am, but that doesn't make a difference. No, I just I'm think you know speaking, me, I'm, speak, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm speaking on behalf of civil servants here. I, I hear it you. Is, it, it cannot go on. Can you explain and, to somebody who is lucky enough not to be immersed in this world or, or who has only the vaguest interest in the unfolding sagas of modern politics, could you explain to them why... Because I, I guess the person you've referred to, the, the, the official spokesperson, is, is only just dusting off the apology for lying about the parties, right? That, that was, I mean, there, there must be a calculation. Well, we got away with that, still in post. We'll try it again. So wh- why today have you reached this point? What is it about the most recent events that has so prompted did, did, this complete collapse in your, your, your faith, if you like? Yes. So um, following the uh, Sue group, Gray report, Mm -hmm. I felt compelled internally to write to my permanent secretary and directors um, and I stopped short of going to the cabinet office in Simon Case. Mm -hmm. Today what has prompted this phone call Mm -hmm. and for me to go over the edge is the Simon Mm Donald the the former permanent secretary and foreign office who I worked for when I was there Mm -hmm. a civil servant of the utmost integrity and honesty has come out publicly to the Parliamentary Standards Commissioner and said that the information that 10 Downing Street has been issuing to the press and the public is untrue. It is a lie. Now, to see the Justice Secretary this morning following this letter, Dominic Raab, saying... That's not something I recognise, or so the fact, is absolutely extraordinary. Mm. I mean, this, this, this don't, sorry, this is extraordinary. Because you have a serving cabinet, a, a yeah. serving cabinet minister, is trying to undermine the integrity of a, a long-standing senior civil servant who's come out and put his head over the parapet. You know, that is a, it's a big deal. Yes. Why is Dominic Robb doing it? So, uh, do you know what? I spend a lot of my time... I mean, I think I should be working right now. I should be working right now. I should be serving the country and I do my job. You are. I spend a lot of my time thinking about how what can possibly motivate members of the current cabinet to stay in their roles and trot out the lies day in, day out, that are handed to them. And it, it's beyond me. Mm. I, the, the only rational reasoning I, I can come to is that they've tied themselves to the Prime Minister for so long that they know in their heart of hearts that their careers are over, that after the Prime Minister's career is finished, theirs is finished too as a Cabinet Minister. So, um, I, I don't. I, but even then, what? The, it's not that big a deal. It's becoming embarrassing. I, I, I mean, the how how day after day, senior cabinet ministers can knowingly go on to the media and lie to the public, knowingly so. And this, the defence that you hear often from cabinet ministers, that that's what I was told by Number Ten Press Office. Yeah. Don't listen to it, it's lies. I know, I know how senior cabinet minister, ministers prepare for major interviews, particularly on Sunday shows. The idea 
that Theresa Coffey or anyone else, Dominic Raab, in this current climate, will go on to a major political TV show or radio show without being briefed at the most senior levels in number 10, sure. where the political side, the conservative side, is, is wrong. It's not, it's not a number 10 press officer briefing these people. They are being told and being directed by the most senior levels of number 10. And of course. it worries me. It worries me that if, if, that, if it's civil servants who are feeding this stuff, to cabinet ministers say on, on the media, are they being told to tell lies? Or are they being told this is the truth, now go and, go and say it? Either way, it's dangerous because, come on, are you trying to tell me, num- I'm going to speak to number, number 10 press office now, I'm mm-hmm. speaking to number, number 10 press office, this is on your office and you're listening to me right now. I have worked in press office across government for 16 years I have had the privilege of working with extremely capable people in number 10 press office for a number of years, people who I respect highly and who I consider friends. Look at yourself today in the mirror. Look at yourself right now and tell yourself that what you're being asked to say on behalf of the government is true. Tell yourself that. Mm. Okay? Mm. And after that, go on to your laptop or computer and look at the Government Communications Service Party and Ethics Guidance. What does it say? What does it say about honesty and integrity? You are better than this. You know you are. It has to stop today. And I'm speaking directly to Number 10 Press Office now. Guys, come on. It's over. <laughs> it is over. Stop it now. Get up from your desks, walk away, no more. Simon Case, come out today, make a public statement saying that you have lost all confidence in the political leadership of 10 Downing Street and you can no longer fulfil your role as Cabinet Secretary and Head of Service. How can you? How can you today, after seeing Simon McDonald's letter, how can you possibly continue your role as Cabinet Secretary and Head of the Civil Service, knowing that the Prime Minister that you are working for is overseeing the most corrupt disintegration of our government institutions in modern history. And it is irrefutable now. It is irrefutable. And to the Cabinet... I mean, what do you say to the Cabinet? I don't know. You're lost already. You are lost. But now, have some self-respect. Have some self-respect. And today, say, enough is enough. And walk away. Because, oh, James, Excuse I mean, me. I could talk about this all day. I won't, I, I won't bore you. I, I don't think there's this, much danger just, of that. I'll, I'll, I'll finish by saying, <laughs> do, not, do not underestimate. Do not, do not, and, and I'm speaking to the public now, people listening at home. Do not underestimate how dangerous this is. Yeah. You will, politicians will come on to the media, as they always do, and say, people don't care about this stuff. Don't listen to them. They have to. I know you care. I know you care. I know you're tired of it. I know it goes, I know that at home, all you hear day in, day out, is the same old stuff. And politicians will say, oh, people don't want to hear about it. Yeah, people don't want to hear about it. They want it to stop. If it stops, they won't hear about it. So my message to the public is, care. Keep on caring. Keep on writing to your local MPs. Get on the phones today and tell them enough is enough, particularly those in Conservative constituencies. Tell them that enough's enough. Keep on caring. And do not, and I cannot underestimate this, and I stress this again, do not underestimate how dangerous a position this country is in when you have the most senior civil servant spokesperson in government lying day after day to the public and to journalists. That is a failed state. 